I have a dream. Martin Luther King Jr.'s immortal words, delivered on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, have inspired Americans of all backgrounds since they were spoken on that historic day in 1963. Dr. King's dream is our dream. It is the American dream. It's the promise stitched into the fabric of our nation, etched into the hearts of our people, and written into the soul of humankind. President Trump there with his weekly uh, video release this morning, marking the national holiday honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It comes on what would have been Dr. King's 89th birthday. We remember now some of Dr. King's other inspirational words. And in this America, millions of young people grow up in the sunlight of opportunity. But tragically and unfortunately, there is another America. I think we all have moral obligations to obey just laws. On the other hand, I think we have moral obligations to disobey unjust laws. There are some things in our society and some things in our world for which I'm proud to be maladjusted. And I call upon all men of goodwill to be maladjusted to these things until the good society is realized. The great masses of people are determined to end the exploitation of their races and lands. And in one majestic chorus, they are singing in the words of our freedom song, ain't gonna let nobody turn us around. Dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. This morning, Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke and FBI Director Chris Wray joined Dr. King's son and his family in laying a wreath at the ML Key Memorial in Washington, D.C. Dr. King's son addressed those gathered. The question becomes, what will we do as communities across America to fulfill and envision and make the dream become a reality? I'm not here to talk about what has not happened because we know what has not happened. But what I'm here to do is to look to the future, to figure out how we as a nation can come together as the nation that we always have been. Joining me live now is NAACP President and CEO Derek Johnson. Uh, Derek, good to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, I, I would have liked to have talked to you anyway on uh, MLK Junior Day to sort of mark where we are since the passing of Dr. King. But this has now changed in nature, given uh, <laughs> the comments that the president made last week. And I sort of ask you, where do we go from here? Uh, we, we, we know racism still is alive and well in America. We wouldn't have thought that it, uh, it, it was as blatant and obvious as it would be in the White House, as we saw last week. Well, racism still is still alive and well. Uh, unfortunately, we celebrate a speech, and not even the speech, the climax of a speech, because in the speech, it was talking about an unfilled promise that all men and women should be treated with equal protection under the law, that all citizens should be afforded clear opportunities. And this White House uh, is very tone deaf to that. You know, if you consider the legacy of Dr. King, it was about advocating for those who cannot speak for themselves. We must ensure that all citizens and non-citizens are treated with human dignity. Are you satisfied with referring to the White House as tone deaf on this issue? Because I think for a lot of Americans, uh, the comments that the president made on Thursday crossed a line into something that's that's more than tone deaf. Well, let me be very clear. He's tone deaf to Dr. King in the speech, mm. as I've seen the video package. I'm very clear that this president is racist, but we have to move beyond that. Okay. We have to move to look at the 2018 election cycle to ensure that African Americans and other uh, individuals who care about true democracy engage this year at levels that we have not seen before. In order for us to counter the racism that's coming out of the White House, we need a congressional landscape, a, a Senate uh, body 
body that truly value human dignity, that, that who can respect the rule of law and could re look at the speech that Dr. King gave through the, uh, all of the speeches, not just mm -hmm. the one speech, yep. and really live up to the promises that this, this country should be uh, delivering to all citizens. How do you renew the promises? I mean, one of the things that uh, Dr. King talked a lot about was uh, economic equality. He really spoke about the need. You know, many people say that he, he a lot of the speeches that don't get as much coverage are about uh, bringing people into economic equality in this country. And really what we've seen since then, not, not just along racial lines, but we've seen inequality growing. So in 1968, Dr. King traveled to Memphis to uh, support workers who were sanitation workers for the city of Memphis who were, who were not being paid a fair wage Correct. for all the work they were doing. This year is the 50th anniversary. We have those sanitation workers here in Los Angeles with us as we celebrate the 49th Annual Image Awards. We're doing that to raise the profile to understand that if there, if there were not people being exploited for free and cheap labor, slavery, mm -hmm. segregation, there would have never been a civil rights movement. Worker rights, civil rights are the same yep. thing.